Hey, welcome. Welcome to our YouTube channel as La Cité Church in Paris. Uh, it's really great to interact with you in this way. Go ahead and subscribe to our channel and don't hesitate to like, to share, and uh, let's uh, continue interacting in this way. Great to have you here. Uh, we are continuing today our series called Revision. It's coming back to the vision that God has for us as a church and for us too individually. It's a great exercise to do to come back to the vision that God has and go back to Him, to what He's called us to. So we saw previously that we want to be a church that is contagious, not with any virus, but with a gospel, with a good news about Jesus Christ. We want to be passionate about this good news. We know we have an impact to make both in Paris and beyond, and we want to be a church that is contagious. Secondly, we want to be a church that is constructive, that is teaching, that is laying good foundations where people can grow in maturity and in the gifts that God has placed within each one. So thirdly, for today, we want to be a church that contributes, a, a contributing church, a church that is generous, that contributes towards each one, contributes towards the larger church, uh, but also in our society. And we don't live for ourselves. Somebody says that the church is the only organization that exists for the benefit of its non-members. We exist for the sake of others. We can easily fall into the trap of existing for ourselves, of doing only what is directly beneficial to us. But that is not love. Um, in quoting Jesus, Paul says, it is better to give than to receive. And we believe that we want to be a church that is a contributing church, that is a generous church towards others. So we want to be an actor in society. We don't, we don't want to be a spectator. We want to be a contributing church. This notion implies generosity. It implies intentionality. And it also implies a sacrificial love. So going back to the church in Antioch, we're going to read from Acts chapter 11, verse 27 to 30. During this time, some prophets came down from Jerusalem to Antioch. One of them, named Agabus, stood up and through the Spirit predicted that a severe famine would spread over the entire Roman world. This happened during the reign of Claudius. The disciples, each according to his ability, decided to provide help for the brothers living in Judea. This they did, sending their gifts to the elders by Barnabas and Saul. So we can see that uh, they gave towards others. They were generous. Uh, generosity is not always practical. It's not always convenient. It's not comfortable. It costs. Um, and, but we want to be a church that is contributing, that is generous towards others, towards other churches, and towards our society. Uh, with a true generosity, uh, a largeness, um, concrete love, a uh, church that supports others, that encourages others, that gives, uh, that partners with, that contributes a joy for the whole earth. It is better to give than to receive. So in closing this uh, part of our revision series, just a short note about generosity. Uh, Jesus instructs us to be rich towards God. We can read this in Luke chapter 12 in 2 Corinthians 8. And how are we to be rich towards God? How is this practically put in place? Firstly, when talking about finances, is give systematically. Give regularly, give monthly, uh, but decide to, to give not under emotions, but with a revelation of Christ in mind to give systematically. For, secondly, give in proportion to your revenues. We saw the church in Antioch that they gave each according to their ability. And uh, so decide to give in proportion to your revenues. We have a conviction of tithing, which is 10%, and we give even above that. Uh, but you need to act based on your conviction. We just, uh, but give in proportion to your revenues, give proportion, in proportion to your ability. If it's 10%, great, be obedient to the word. Uh, but if that's not your conviction, start somewhere. Start with a percentage and grow that percentage uh, accordingly. Thirdly, give sacrificially and generously. 
uh, not out of excess, but that which costs us. That's what true giving is. Fourthly, give voluntarily, not under compulsion. We have no obligation to give. Give voluntarily. And lastly, give joyously. Uh, may each one give what he has decided in his heart, without regrets or constraint, because God loves a cheerful giver. So we want to be a church that is contributing, that is generous.